Hey, Andrew, as things wrap up now in spring practice, how's it been for you guys? What's your What has been your impression of this spring? Um, so from starting from the corner position, I mean, definitely we've improved individually. Um, as a whole, we've also gotten closer, gotten better, um, trying out some new techniques. We've definitely improved on that. Um, we've got some young guys coming along as well. Uh, Greg Johnson, Ira Oniha. Um, we definitely got some guys that I think can step up and make some plays. Um, from a defensive standpoint, I think we're definitely meshing uh, as one collective. I mean, Coach Folker's throwing some stuff at us, and I think we're we're handling it pretty well. Um, we're doing better than I would say uh, I expected us to do. Um, I definitely think that we have a high chance of making some big plays coming up this fall. So going into the summer is great momentum. And what was your biggest goal for you personally coming into spring practice? Um, personally, I just wanted to turn myself into a better um, football player, honestly. Um, just advancing myself just from the cornerback position. Uh, I wanted to make myself a more well-rounded football player, just special teams-wise. I aim to get more reps there, help the team out however I can, not just strictly from the cornerback position. Um, I've been trying to be a better leader as well in the room. Uh, obviously, uh, we have one senior, uh, DP Deshaun, so uh, he's going to need a lot of uh, help from other guys. So I aim to step up that spring and make sure that I'm getting – giving him the help that he needs any, any way I can as a junior. So, Do you see this season as a season where the defensive backfield, though you guys have played really well in the past, just maybe takes it up another notch? It always seems like you guys have really come along together and, and looks like this might be the time for your unit to shine. Right. I mean, it's definitely helpful having all four guys return. Um, I think our relationships – together are stronger than they've ever been. I mean, skill wise, we're getting better and better every single day. I mean, we're we're communicating better. And just that experience of playing the whole season together um, really helps. I mean, we've got great depth behind us too. So I mean, coming into the summer, we're gonna we're gonna keep working uh, to get better as a unit, I should say. Um, and then aim to get some more momentum going into the fall from this summer. So and this unit has had the same coaching voices the last couple seasons. Does that make a difference where you're able to build along with those leaders that are helping coach you? Right, definitely. Coach Green, Coach Lewis, I mean, they're great men not only, but they're awesome football coaches. I mean, they've helped guide us along the way every step. I mean, um, so from going to individual meetings, now we meet as one unit, as a DB unit. So it's really helpful to get insider information from what the safety's thinking on this play so that we can really um, be more connected on the field. So that really helps a lot from them. Thank you. Thank you. Flags. Hey, Andrew. Um, last year you started 10 of the 12 games. What did, well, what did that experience gain for you, that, that starting experience? I know you played in – I mean, a lot of games before that, but that it's a different story when you're a starter and out there with so many reps having to execute. Right. Um, that experience definitely built the confidence that I think I needed going into the spring, as well as the um, just the composure that I needed being on the field for the first time like that. I mean, playing in that Notre Dame game, it was a bit of a shock at first, but if you look at the end of the season, playing that ECU game, it was a close game all the way to the end of the game. And that comfortability of being able to just calm down, breathe, focus, and explode, as Coach Volker says, is is very helpful for going into the spring for sure. So those reps um, definitely are going to be able to help me look at the film from last year um, and gain some momentum going into this summer so we can really get to work in the fall. So you had two pass breakups and two inter and an interception. Do you want to improve your numbers as far as ball hawking and getting after the ball in the air? Um, so I'm not so much worried about the numbers. Uh, I just go out, I play the same brand of football. I aim to play every single day. Um, I would like to see myself, uh, improve my ball skills coming up this off season. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm aiming or chasing any numbers. Uh, the plays will come where they come. So, I mean, as long as I get my skill set better and get my eyes better on my keys, um, that'll put myself in position to make more plays for sure. What about tackling? I mean, did you, when you reviewed film, did you feel 
You could be better in tackling. I think he finished with 35 tackles, but when you reviewed film where there missed tackles, do you feel like that was an area? I know the coaching staff made tackling a very high priority this spring in total for everyone. Right. So, yeah, as a defensive unit, we've definitely focused and honed in on tackling more and more every single day. Um, this spring, definitely, and more towards the end of the season um, with tackling circuits and things like that, improving, improving your tackling skills. Um, that's really been a strong suit for us. Uh, for me personally, I would definitely say um, my tackling was a focus for spring ball specifically, just because it's, it's a little challenging to work your uh, tackling technique without pads when you're by yourself. Um, in the summer and stuff like that. But definitely going into spring, I wanted to improve my tackling, any live period chances we got, um, just the technique and how we approach tackling changed completely. And I love what Coach Volker's done with that. So um, I definitely wanted to improve on that for sure this spring. So you were listed as the boundary corner last season, but I think you all have to be able to play both. Um, when, during games, are you always on the boundary or are there times when you're the field corner? Um, yeah, there's definitely times where you are the field corner, boundary corner, um, especially in the fast paced conference that we play in. Uh, you play teams that hurry up on offense. Um, so you definitely can't keep switching back and forth. You're going to get tired. You're not going to get set. So uh, me and Deshaun, we do a great job helping each other out, learning both the field and the boundary. Um, I would say that, um, one of us has specialized in one of them. One of us has specialized in the other for the majority of our career, especially last season, I would say. Um, I was more of the boundary corner. Deshaun was more of the field corner. So uh, helping each other out whenever we needed tips like that and stuff, it was really um, – it was crucial that we knew both sides of the ball so that we could uh, be able to smoothly transition from one side of the field to the other if needed. So what do you feel you bring to the table, Andrew? If you could describe yourself – as a player, how would you do so? Um, I would say a good mind. Um, I would say a great teammate, aiming to bring that great leadership along as well. Uh, I definitely think that after this summer, the skill set's going to be there for sure. Um, and just especially after last season, getting the experience I needed, just that calmness, and I'm less nervous than I was before. Just being able to gain the trust of my teammates, I feel like, um, is going to be crucial for coming up this offseason. So you mentioned Deshaun. What what do you feel Deshaun brings to the table? He is now the veteran guy. Right. Um, yeah, he great he brings that great uh mindset from that experience, the wisdom that he brings to the table, his experiences through his past two years of playing since sophomore year have definitely been great. Um, he's a former receiver, uh, so he definitely brings that that um ideology from a receiver standpoint, so that we know what they think sometimes um when they're lining up against us. Uh, he brings great tackling to the table. He's a great tackler, very physical, great cover guy. Um, and just his leadership in the corner room and the DB room alone helps uh, uplift the defense as a whole. So we definitely needed that from him this spring. I think he's shown it a lot. So you and John, Sean, you and Deshaun ever talk about the fact you're both Virginia boys? Oh, yeah. We talk, we chirp each other all the time about it. You know, Richmond versus uh, Norfolk, that's a pretty heavy topic in Virginia. So we like to give each other um, – a little stuff about it so here and there. So it's definitely great having another Virginia kid in the room. Yeah, those Tidewater guys are all proud. Has he ever invited you down to Norfolk so you can see what's all about down there? Uh, no, nah, I never. He wants me to come down there, but I think I'll just – I'll stay in Richmond for right now, you know. <laughs> all right, thanks. No, thank you. Scott Wyckoff. What has it meant to you to have a coach like Coach Green at your position – that has been through everything you've been as a football player and as a member of the brigade at the Naval Academy? Um, Coach Green, he brings a lot of wisdom, more than I ever thought he would. Uh, he develops us not only as football players, but as men. Um, we can always go talk to him. And me and Coach Green, personally, I think we have a great relationship. Um, like Even one of us has uh, is not happy with the other side. Um, we can always go talk to each other and not have any bad blood between it. Um, we're always understanding with each other. Um, but, yeah, he's he's really brought that outside of football aspect into it and helping us realize the bigger picture of why we're here, um, not just to play football, but he also does a great job of balancing it out, making sure that we know how, how football, how much football 
um, is an importance in our life here as well, not just strictly um, school or just strictly football. So he does a good job of helping us balance it out and uh, live a maintained life. And at this point of your career, what has it meant to you to now be comfortable with all that goes on off the football field, on the yard, all the 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 challenges that you face, being more comfortable with all of that, does that help you on the football field? Oh, definitely. Um, Coach Newberry talks about it a lot. Uh, the less you have to worry about over here in the hall, the easier it makes to play uh, on the field. Just less to think about, less stress on your body, less stress on your mind. You can play clear, fast, and focused every single day you come out to practice. So being able to adjust over here and make sure all your grades are right, all your military expectations are right, I mean, it helps clear your mind on the field at times. So as long as you're taking care of business over here, then you should be fine on the field. So, And finally, part of the business for you guys with Coach Volker and Coach Newberry has been this uncanny ability to create turnovers and, you know, get to a ball and everyone seems to be around the ball. What is that like on this defense? Why is that so important? Um, so elite uh, effort, attitude, toughness, just getting to the ball at all times. Um, you never know what can happen. That's why we were so good at forcing turnovers. Everyone's running to the ball. 11 gold has to the ball every single play. Um, it's something that we preach a lot here. And I mean, it changes the way we play. If we don't play like that, we're not the same defense that we are. We're not the same team that we are offense, offensively as well. So um, just everyone putting in 100% effort also builds that trust that if I give my 100% effort, I know the guy next to me, the man next to me is going to give the exact same 100% effort and we have nothing to worry about at all. So not just being able to run to the ball, but being able to 100% focus on your key, your technique, that, that builds the trust of the defense and allows us to play fast and focused every single play, so... And what's your favorite thing at the Naval Academy that's not involved with football that you do at the Naval Academy that has nothing to do with what you do on the practice field or in games? Um, My friends, for sure. Uh, I have solid roommates. I mean, best guys I could have asked a room for. My friends outside my room. I mean, I just have great people around me. That's the best place. That's the best part about this place is the people you meet, um, the different connections you can make within the halls it's it's one of the best things most unique things about going here in East service academy so that's you gotta love it thank you thank you who are your roommates give them a shout out uh daniel Choi, torn hawk love those guys are they athletes uh they're not they're not bill wagner so you had mentioned the depth i mean i'm looking at last year's depth chart and and bd williams was the backup at both corner spots which showed you know and he's he was already playing safety um you got to get some depth behind there especially now they've lost elias transferring uh you mentioned greg johnson and ira uh kind of tell me what those guys bring to the table and have they improved i mean does coach green feel like he's got backups he can trust uh for sure um ira and greg i mean they're characters in their own but they're great players coming along for us as a young talent i mean just the speed they're playing with right now. That's what spring ball is about is bringing the, bringing the young guys along, uh, older guys, improving their, uh, improving their craft, honing on their craft. But Ira and Greg, I mean, they bring great energy to the field every single day for practice. Uh, they're both physical guys, great cover guys. Um, once they get more immersed in the defense and being able to adjust with the season, um, I think they'll definitely be great assets for us and give us that two, three depth right there for sure on either side of the ball. <laughs> I've noticed Greg at practice a couple times. He's, he brings a bit of an edge, doesn't he? Right, yeah. So Greg was, I guess, I think he was um, originally a safety uh, two, three days into fall camp. His freshman year, they moved him to corner. Um, so he definitely brings that that edge of a safety, that hard-hitting, come down, knock you back type of mentality we need at corner. So, I mean, definitely having him back there, um, it definitely helps us. It actually brings us along. Uh, he's definitely got that that Dallas – that Dallas uh, mindset where he's going to, he's going to make you compete for everything you've got. So uh, he definitely bring makes the room better for sure. Any other guys that have stood out to you, maybe some young freshmen who maybe aren't quite there yet, but you could see them being pretty good down the road. Uh, definitely Kenny Hall. I mean, he's my class young sophomore, but he's been dealing with injuries his whole career here. Um, he's definitely coming along this spring for sure. Um, he's definitely put in the work. I've seen it my whole time here. Uh, I definitely think he's going to be 
a definitely a key asset, especially on special teams coming in, getting that depth better uh, as we take on the season, coming into fall camp, definitely through the summer as well. So. All right, thanks a lot, Andrew. Appreciate your time. Thank you. I've got one before you go. What's been your impressions of Coach, uh, Coach Chronic's offense being a defensive guy and going against it uh, uh, every day in practice? What are your thoughts? Um, definitely something that we needed as a defense. Um, just getting various looks from the receivers, uh, from the A-backs. I mean, the offense that they're running is definitely – they're challenging us on edges. Um, we definitely needed it to see where we at on defense. And he's bringing along a great mindset. Um, he's really on edge, and that's what we need from a coach like that. Um, he's bringing the offense along, uh, just changing their mentality completely, making them just 100% pedal to the metal all the time. And definitely that's what we needed to help us along this uh, offseason for sure. Coach Green, what's been your impression of your cornerbacks in this spring? Yeah, I, I like our development. I like where, where we're headed. Um, I think we've shown some great promise. Uh, the older guys are now the older guys now. They're not uh, the young pups that we've been had over the over the years. So uh, Deshaun Peel and and Andrew Duhart um, have have shown themselves to be veterans, and so that that that's that's great. And then the some some young guys, young freshmen who are really talented guys, uh, Ira Oniha and and uh, Greg Johnson have really stepped up and and shown some great promise uh, moving forward. What does it mean to have the two veterans, like you mentioned, for this defensive backfield that has risen each year, is is developed? Does this make it a year where they can take it to the next level? I really think that that the the defensive backs, you know, they, they've come through the fire. Uh, they were all young. If you look at the across the board, um, the DBs that we have, um, they kind of all started playing together as 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 freshmen, sophomores, and now they're there will be rising seniors. I think there will be a, a strength of our defense um, to have the veterans in, in, on the back end, which, as you know, um, the explosive plays and things of that nature, those are the guys that really curtail all those things and make sure that uh, the, the ball is kept close and tight to the line of scrimmage. So um, it, it feels really great to have that, uh, that level of veteran leadership in, in the back end. And it really seems like these guys enjoy both playing together but also practicing together. Absolutely. Uh, and you can see it. I mean, they're, um, they've developed this, this relationship now on and off the field, uh, and it shows in their communication um, uh, that they're, they're, they're joining playing with each other. Like the, the, the pre, uh, the, before the, before we even get on the field, the communication that happens between all those guys is, is, is wonderful to see. Um, and they, they're enjoying, I think, um, going into their senior year, uh, they're enjoying this process. When they come out to the practice field, do you see with each practice, like the development you talked about, things that you've worked on that you've talked about in meetings playing out in those continuing practices? Absolutely. Uh, and like I said, the, the communication that goes on during the field is, is what they're like, they're like coaches on the field now. Right? They, they've seen it all. I mean, they've seen so much football and played so much football together uh, that some of the, 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 the calls, the defensive calls that the coaches make, the players can make adjustments without much talk from the from the coaches, uh, and so um, they're they're really enjoying um, just the it's, it's it's really fun to see and to see those guys really go and, and speak to one another as the play is going on and making adjustments on the fly when they they, they couldn't do that earlier um, in, in their careers, uh, and that's what's happening. I'm happy to see those things. And how has it helped in the development this spring having a new offense for them to go up against a new look that they haven't seen before that they need to react to? Uh, it, it has been a challenge. I mean, um, you know, Coach Chronic and his offense uh, has presented another challenge for us, and they're giving us some, some offensive sets that allow us to act, you know, go out and compete more on the perimeter, uh, which we're happy to see. The ball is in the air a lot more than it used to be. Uh, and that for us is great for our development for, for, for the, for the conference. And in this conference each and every week, you, your corners, they're out there on islands. They've got guys coming after them with, without going back into a huddle, just getting right back on the line. Absolutely. Uh, and the way we run practice, uh, the intensity of our practices and, and, and um, what coach Kronick has brought to the, 
to the table is that we have, have to have really dis disciplined eyes. Uh, and he's given us some, some offensive sets that puts us, you know, in man coverage a lot of the time, uh, which is awesome for us. Um, and, and we're out on the islands and, and we have to practice our technique and we're getting better as, as coverage co corners um, simply because of this offense. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Flags. Coach, Deshaun Peel is now the veteran leader in the room. How is he taking on that role? I mean, has he accepted the responsibility of being a leader in there? He is. Uh, he, he's a quiet leader. Uh, he leads by example. Uh, and he doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't talk a whole bunch. But when he does, people listen. Um, and he own, he owns the room. Everybody knows who who, who the alpha is, um, and he is he is, he he shows that. But it's not you're not going to hear him screaming, yell at guys. But he will pull them to the side and make sure that the standard is kept high. What did you feel Deshaun did well last season, and what did you want him to improve upon going into next season? Um, I, I think he he uh, he really kind of stepped up to, into and in owning the, the the position last year. Uh, I think he had you know, several interceptions. Uh, he's a you know all conference on um, you know honoree. Seats. He, he really played like a, a what we want our cornerbacks to play like. He was confident. Um, he started the season a little shaky because of he had an injury. Once he got out of the injury, uh, he played with great confidence. Um, he he was a he was could communicate well with the rest of the DBs and the, and the people around him. Um, and this year he has stepped up his communication, uh, pre, pre snap and post post snap communication, which is awesome. Um, and he's taking ownership. He's actually coaching up a lot of the young guys on the sideline. And what about Andrew Duhart? He's the guy that stepped in as the starter last season. I think he started the last 10 games. What did you see out of him last season in terms of his development? And what did you want Andrew to work on going into next season. Yeah, uh, and I think he would, he would admit this, but going into last season, you know, he, he was you know still kind of a young pup, and he was, you know, trying to figure out if, if you know, he could play in this conference and having the confidence to do so. I think allowing him to get in early on and, and test the waters uh, against some of the better teams, and they, we got him in against uh, Notre Dame, and I think it really boosted his confidence because he, he made some decent plays against Notre Dame. And then he realized he could play at this level and he's just building off that confidence. Um, I want him to challenge himself more. Um, he has the ability. Um, I want him to trust his, his training and trust the work he's put in uh, and, and, and be more challenging on routes and, 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 and have tighter coverage. Uh, he has all the skill and the resource to do it. Uh, and just building off of what he did last year. So depth, I think, was an important uh, thing going into the spring because last year on the final depth chart you had Mbidi Williams as the backup at both corner spots and he's already playing safety um, and now and Elias Larry has transferred so can you talk about trying to rebuild the depth? Absolutely. So Mbidi is always there. You know, just kind of remind everybody that Mbidi started out as a cornerback, right? He, uh, I, I. I recruited him, brought him here. We trained him up as a cornerback. He went through the fire as a as a young freshman and sophomore uh, in the cornerback room, and then he switched to safety last year. Uh, and so he understands the foundation of the defense, and he's still arguably one of the one of the better cornerbacks that we have, uh, regardless of position. Uh, and so we can always use him and put him in there. But I am very very happy about uh, two young guys that came along who are two freshmen that we we thought were talented. But we didn't quite know, and 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 in this spring they proved themselves worthy uh, of going out and, and running the defense. That's Greg Johnson, and and Ira Oniha. Uh, they have really shown uh, what the future looks like here, uh, and they are very talented. They're extremely athletic kids, both of them, and they and they are playing early in their careers like we want those guys to play. What do you feel Greg and Ira bring to the table? How would you describe each of those players? Um, they're athletic. Um, they're, they are, um, they have the length that we like. When I say length, uh, look at talking about wingspan, uh, not just height, uh, but their levers, their arms, how long their arms are, and how, how they can use their those levers to, 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 to fend off defenders, to uh, connect with wide receivers, things of that nature. 
Um, they are aggressive. Uh, they don't. Uh, they don't. They're not. They're not tentative at all. Uh, you have to. You have to kind of pull them back a little bit. That 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 to that to say sick them. They they are. They are. They, I have to kind of pull them back. Like, hey man, like settle down right here. We need you to to be uh, a little bit less uh, aggressive on this coverage. Uh, this is what this coverage calls, and they want to. They want to man up every every time, which is that's what you want out of a cornerback to be able to do. Uh, so we love what they're doing. Um, they don't. They are both physical. They will hit you. Um, they will hit. You know. They will get the ball carried down with aggression. And so we like all those things that those guys are showing. Um, they, they look and feel like like veteran ball players. And I know mentally, right? They got to catch up with the game and and all the other things that surround you know a game uh, uh, on and off the field. But certainly, their on the field uh, play is it, it, like is what we want to see. So obviously, you need to create a three deep. And hopefully even deeper than that, are there some other players that have stood out? I mean, there's some guys that have been around, like a Lorenzo Vitti and some other guys. Um, I think uh, Andrew mentioned uh, – who was it he mentioned, Scott? Kenny Hall? Yeah, Kenny Hall. Yeah, so Kenny Hall uh, is, is a he's, – he's a veteran. He's been around for a while. Uh, he's coming off injury. Uh, and so we're we having to get him – Back off of injury and healthy, he just he just really kind of got back into his training this past winter. So he's going to be somebody we're going to count on down the line. Uh, he has to get healthy first, fully healthy. Um, he's nursing some injuries right now, but I, I see him as a contributor. Um, you know, starting out somewhere around the, the special teams, Mark getting some playing time, and then contributing to us a little bit later on. Uh, Lorenzo Vitti certainly has the 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 body type that we like. He's he's long and athletic. Um, he, he he's close to six foot tall. Um, five living change, I believe. Um, and he has the he's the prototype body type we like. Uh, and he's he's come along as well, uh, a little bit behind the others, but he'll be somebody that will, will help us out and help our program out down the line. And we look forward to to getting him some special teams reps to prepare him for for, for the games. I think, Jamar, there, I think the, there's probably another guy, right? Arnell. Arnell Hedington, he he's he's nursing the injury as well, unfortunately. Um he got injured, uh, we, and we're trying to figure out what's running, uh, what, what, what the, what his his progress is. Uh, unfortunately, he was he had to sit out the last um, three quarters of the of the spring football season here, and so we we're, we won't get him back until the summer. But he, you're talking about somebody who's six foot plus, uh, who a guy that we like to see. Um, he's going to be able to help us out uh, down the line here once he gets back healthy, get him back into the fold. Uh, it, it just uh, I hate that he had to miss out on so much uh, practice uh, during, during this during this spring season, but uh, but I look forward to getting him back and getting him back in the room and get him going. I'll pass it back to Scott. Uh, actually, Pete Medhurst. RB, when you, as you mentioned, getting guys to trust training, how tough is it to get guys to do that? The precision, the discipline. That's necessary because, as you know, if you fail in just one of those things, the wide receivers in this league are good enough that that can be the difference in making a big play or stopping a big play. Absolutely. So the, the quarterback position um, is, you know, outside of maybe the quarterback is arguably one of the hardest positions uh, in in football, all of football. Um, the athleticism and the discipline it requires requires a special mindset. Um uh, so much so that a player has to develop, has to get the actual game reps, I think, to get the confidence uh, to walk out on an island and line up against the other team's best athlete in a one-on-one -on -one situation and, and win. And so um, that level of discipline requires you to be disciplined in a lot of other areas in your life, not just football. You have to approach your day in a very disciplined manner. Um, in case you, like you said, you can't make those mistakes on game day. And so a little, a, a false step or a misstep one way or the other could be the difference between a, 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 a touchdown or, or an INT. So um, that requires a lot of off the field investment into those guys uh, so that it can uh, come into, come into play on the field. Um, they have to come to practice every day ready to go. And if they have any amount of or lack of confidence in any given play, 
like you said, that could be the difference between a, a big play uh, or uh, on our side or on their side. So um, um, it, a cornerback has to have experience now, to do that. He has to get the reps. He has to get one-on-one -on -one reps, which Coach Newberry has allowed us to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time versus the, our, our, our Navy wide receivers. Just get us better. And so we're happy, happy with, the, with the way that, that it's going. But, but again, a great level of discipline in your own life uh, in all areas to be ready to go on Saturdays. At the same time as coaches, as you break down each opponent, um, we have so many creative route trees with so many offenses now uh, in this game. How do you all try to simplify it so, A, it's not paralyzing for you all as coaches in trying to work against it each week and at the same time trying to make sure that the players don't suffer that mental paralysis as well? You know, all right, this guy's lined up here. Is he going to go there? Because we have such non-traditional route trees now in this game, and it literally changes week to week against the teams you play. Absolutely. And, and the technology is being introduced, right? The coach is going to be able to talk to his quarterback, um, you know, well into the, into the uh, play clock. And so we have to really do a great job of, of, of doing all the analysis work for those guys, pulling out all the unnecessary minutia that, that, that surrounds uh, a given play and give the guy a, a couple set rules um, that we'll go by. We use those called divider rules. Uh, and that's just what a receiver lines up into potential routes, right? And they have to be able to read and understand concepts as they develop. Now, there are certain two-man route concepts that you can only have. Like you can't run two guys in the same zone. Um, and so we have to understand that going in. So we try to give them so, some set, simple rules to follow so they can play fast and with aggression. Because some of that has to be overcome with just sheer aggression and sheer physical ability, Um uh, because you cannot, like you said earlier, you cannot hope to cover every route tree, every pattern, every special circumstance um, that that does that's offense try to put to, put us in, uh, and so some of that has to be overcome by sheer aggression uh, and physicality. This is such a unique year too, because you welcome new opponents into the league, uh, and during this this time of the year right now, as a staff. Um, and obviously with the resources you have available to you, how much do you all or will you spend time on a couple of these new opponents um, that obviously you all have not faced uh, that have now become league opponents like a rice who will now uh, end up on the the, the schedule here uh, and some of these other teams that, you know, have obviously played some good football in other places. Absolutely. Coach Volker has done a really good job. He's a um, coach Volker is very organized. He does his, his own analysis he's he's passionate about defense and so you know we we're, we're already uh, looking into you know some of those things that are going on and we'll have those guys give them some samples of what they uh, are to expect in conference from these new opponents um and we'll have packages already built for those guys before we enter in like the rice quarterback we know he, he was at temple last year right. so yeah, sure. you know we, we'll, we'll take some stuff off him and and, and be able to, to analyze it there but um the staff, how Coach Volker organizes it in each week for us um, allows, you know, each coach to, to to pull a part of the scouting report out and do it and and, and contribute to the to the scouting reports. Does this awesome analysis for each opponent. So I think contributed a lot to our success last year was his sheer analysis and game planning for each particular opponent. And so um, and we'll do the same thing for the for those new guys coming up, too. And we'll take a look at you know, who who they got coming in. As you know, the the teams kind of change each year. Uh, it, it's 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 a free agency out there um, outside of the Annapolis, uh, and so uh, we'll, we'll we'll pull all that data from their previous teams, uh, and, and and we'll put it into the system and uh, and analyze it um, in our own way. Awesome, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Ah, what a cough. Coach, what does it mean to you? to be coaching in a system now for the sixth season, Coach Newberry and Coach Volker's system. What kind of familiarity does that do for you and, and make you excel as your position coach? Yeah, it's it's, it's like a family, right? You, you, you're you in it long enough that you understand all the all the family's lingo and jargon and, and understand things that, are, that you can't really always spell out um, 
you get the context and the meaning behind what they're saying or what they want out of out of that position group uh, without them having to say it and repeat it over and over again, uh, like they used to have to do in, in, in the beginning um, because they had been together for a while. And now I've been a part of the staff with these same guys for a while and I understand what, we, what we're trying to get. So uh, we don't spend a whole bunch of time anymore trying to coach the coaches. Um, the coaches are now left alone to have more time to spend on their position groups uh, to get those guys right because I understand the meaning and what what coach actually wants out of a particular call um, and, and can and can adjust uh, based off my own experience. What was it about your career in the Marine Corps that benefited you as a coach? Well, coaching, uh, if you break it down, you know, in, as simple as I can, fo football is really just a vehicle. What we're really doing is we're developing young men, uh, making them successful on and off the field, uh, and 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 that's leadership. And so the Marine Corps, you, you're you're a leader the day one. Uh, actually, that starts here at the Naval Academy, but in particular the Marine Corps, uh, you're a leader from day one, and you're expected to lead and lead by example. And all those le lessons I learned as a Marine um, officer, um, I just apply it to football. Um, I, I take care of my troops, my cornerbacks. I take care of them on out. You know, I try to feed them. I try to get them to, to make sure they're okay uh, socially. Uh, make sure that they are. I talk to their parents. I have a relationship with their parents, and so all those things, those life lessons about being a good leader, being a servant leader, I just bring to my room. Um, and you no, know, you can't raise a leader by 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 being demeaning or and that kind of stuff. And so, I, I praise them a lot, but and I'm hard on them, and I, it's a standard to, to be held. Um, but I'm always trying to build them up to be great men. Thanks, Coach. Wags. Coach, is there any corner other than Duhart, Peel, and Embiidi that has played in a game for Navy? Nope. Th those are all, only the three have, who have played in a game for Navy. And so uh, my plan is to – like I said, we use special teams right here. I'm a, I'm a guy who started on special teams before I actually got to play real snaps. Um, that they'll start on special teams so that we can get them ready um, before we need them in a game. But they're going to play. RB young guys going to play. RB blocked a punt his freshman year, I remember. Uh, my first play ever on the field, by the way. Yes, it was. Four touchdowns. Four touchdowns. <laughs> so that, 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 that did a lot for my confidence. <laughs> RB, is that rare that you would only have three corners that have played in a game going into a season? Um, it is rare now, and hopefully that, that won't be the case going forward. Um, but yeah, I, it, we typically around here have had a good, great seniors, and then some young talent coming up behind them. Um, and so hopefully that won't be the case going forward. Hopefully those guys that will play a lot this year uh, will be ahead by. Uh, lots of touchdowns. They'll be able to get in and get those guys in and get them some um, some playing time late in games to get them ready to go. Um, I forgot which question I wanted to ask you next. I'll, I'll let Pete step in while I think about it. All right. We'll go to, we'll go to Pete and we'll go back to Wags. RB, you mentioned special teams consistently uh, throughout as a great introduction for uh, some of these young men, there's a, a massive amount of discipline that it takes to play special teams. How much do you learn about them if they can conquer that, uh, what's being asked of them there? Uh, because that's another area where you run out of your area, run out of your lane, um, a guy can get a, a, a big play. How much do you learn about those guys? Because that's a sample of what you're feeding them maybe not necessarily as much or as complex as what they'll see as a DB, but what do you learn about them as you see them uh, perform on special teams? Yeah. And, and I, I know these guys are athletic. I know that they um, can, can, can play football. What special teams does, it, it allows them to have a one play snapshot of the speed of the other team, right? Uh, the competitive competitiveness of a special teams play, which requires you to beat your man one-on-one -on -one because uh, just about every special team is a one-on-one -on -one play, all right? It allows them to get a feel of the game, right? This is the speed. This is what it feels like to run full speed into another person um, and all those things. 
uh, and they can show me that it can be disciplined enough um, because special teams is delicate, right? Like you said, one mistake and, and the ball could be going back to the other team. Um, it's so delicate that they have the discipline for one of those plays, single plays, and I'll trust them with, with another. Uh, and so it's good to see them run, usually with the gunners, right? And, and we line them up versus the gunners on the on the punt team, and they can match that level of speed, and they can they, they can they surely match uh, wide receiver speed. Last one for me. You've now, you know, in a in a recruiting capacity, now in a coaching capacity, you've had young men that you've recruited, coached. Um, some have gone on, uh, obviously, to be Marines. Um, is there is there is there a moment where you're allowed to to get a sense of satisfaction as you have used what was an incredible opportunity for you, and then extend that opportunity to other young men and their families and see them thrive, grasp that opportunity, uh, not only become good football players but obviously excellent Marines. Uh, as well. Do you ever get a chance to to step back in the speed and everything that football is to to have a sense of satisfaction about being able to share what was so special to you with a, a lot of other young men now uh, as a coach? Absolutely. And Pete, you, you almost got me emotional right there. Um, and here's a full circle moment. So Brandon Jones, who is a 18 grad, um, he was one of you know my my mentees here. Uh, we had some some time, you know, getting him through this process, some ups and downs, but it ended wonderfully. He went to be a Marine. He's a Marine captain, uh, married, two kids, uh, has done an awesome job as a Marine. Now he's back here now this summer as the Marine liaison in the job that I was when I when he was here as a young man. And so um, when he when he stepped foot back into this building yesterday, uh, it was a very emotional moment because it come full circle. And that is a real victory. And that is, that for that moment, I, I understood what my purpose was uh, in this in this capacity, all right? And it is to, to make, you know, help these young men achieve success, go off and do great things. And then I love to see them come back and replace me and do the same for somebody else. And so, in a you know, in my time here, I've I've been seeing a generation of guys go off and do that, and now they're all dads and husbands, uh, and very successful young men. And so, it's a it's a pretty special special moment, uh, and that just happened you know yesterday. Well done, appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Wags, back to you. Yes, I remember what I was going to ask. I don't know if you nominated a player for the Admiral Mac Award. But who would you say is the most improved corner during spring camp? Um, Greg Johnson is the most improved corner of spring ball. Um, he's a guy who we knew was an athletic guy, and uh, he's a he's an All State Texas DB. Um, with the Naps, came here, um, but he is a lot like RB Green was as as a nineteen year old. <laughs> Uh, and, and, uh, and so if you ask anybody on the team, he, he, he's a, he's a, he's a team, not jokes will be that's I don't want to use that word, but he's very, everybody likes him. He's very well liked in, in the locker room. Uh, and now he has matured into a young man who is, who is, who is doing great things in the classroom and on the football field. And I know his, his parents are super proud of what he's done. And I am proud um, that he's here, still here, and, and working as hard as he is. So, yeah, that would be my cornerback, Admiral Mack winner. So, uh, where Duart was saying he used to be a safety, and he brings a little of that safety edge to the corner position? He brings the, the physicality to the corner position, which is awesome. Um, and and those two positions, though, they in the back, they're a little bit different uh, requirements. The safety can stare at the quarterback a little bit more than the cornerback does. The quarterback but not be staring at the quarterback very often. <laughs> and so we have, to, we have to unlearn some safety stuff, but we like to keep the physicality part of it. But we want to get rid of those eyes, get some cornerback eyes, and and, and keep the, the physicality that he, that he brings from the safety room. 